Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC, and welcome to another Babylon video. This is part five of our video series entitled A Tech Artist's Journey, where we are going on a crazy epic journey together. A twisty, curvy journey, like a hike through the woods to create this dancing morph target demo. If this is the first video that you're seeing for this series, then you should know that this is not about taking the most direct path to getting to this demo. It is the opposite. This video series is about trying something that we haven't tried before, about learning something brand new. It is my sincere hope that you've learned something so far on our journey together. We've done four videos where we've spent our time together in Blender, creating a mesh, creating shape keys for that mesh, using uh, fluid simulations to create animation, then capturing that in a texture, storing that in our asset, and then getting that out, exporting it to get it into Babylon. And in this video, this is where we start to see that payoff come to fruition, where we're actually going to start building out a Babylon playground. So with that, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on in. You can open up a new tab in your browser. You're going to go to playground.babylonjs.com, and this is where you'll be presented with the default scene. Now, the default scene comes with a camera, a hemispheric light, a sphere, and a ground plane, okay, a, gr a ground. And uh, the, the camera that we have in here by default is something that I want to get rid of right away. You can use your arrow keys and your mouse keys to kind of move around. I want to use a camera that actually allows me to center on the uh, the, the world origin or the, the object that's going to be in question, which is going to be our dancing morph targets. So let's start right there. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can do this. We're going to get rid of this code here for our camera. I could start by creating the camera and uh, typing it in myself. Uh, I could say, uh, I want this to be a, a new Babylon.arc rotate camera. Uh, or I could actually hit control space to use our handy dandy playground templates, which is little snippets of code that you're probably going to reuse a lot on your Babylon journey. And check it out right here. We have a create an arc rotate camera with degrees or radians. I'm going to use degrees and I can go ahead and hit play. And now I have that arc rotate camera. Awesome. I love it. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is, uh, is something that's pretty user focused. Okay. Uh, to do these dancing morph targets, to have all of these simultaneous uh, bars dancing together, we're going to use something that is specific to WebGL2, which means if a person is coming to your experience, and they're on a browser that only supports WebGL1, this experience will not work correctly. So we want to warn them of that ahead of time, right? We don't want this to just be a bad experience. We want to actually warn them that they're about to try and enter this experience in a browser that doesn't really work all that well. And so we can do that in a really, really simple and easy way. I'm going to just, after the camera here, I'm going to say if... And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in engine and we can get the WebGL version of uh, the current context of the browser of, uh, that's supported. So we can say if engine.webgl version is less than two, and then we can do something about it. So if you're on WebGL one, we can alert you. I'm just going to use the, the basically the browser alert to say something like, uh, oops, uh, hey, sorry, this playground uh, only works with WebGL two. And just like that, I can now have a little warning if a user comes to us. And we can actually test this out very easily in the playground. I'm going to quickly save this playground. And then if I go over here to the top right corner, I can select from WebGL2 or WebGL. Watch what happens when I click WebGL. We'll reload the scene and I'll get that warning. It'll say, oh, hey, guess what? You know, this experience is ideally suited for WebGL2. So let's go back to WebGL2. We have that little warning. We are now covered. That's awesome. So the next thing that we want to do is get rid of our sphere and our ground plane. And of course, we want to load in that awesome mesh that we created together in Blender. So I'm going to start here at light intensity and go all the way down to the ground. And I'm going to get rid of all of that. We're okay if our light intensity is, is all the way up. So uh, we're going to go uh, add our uh, mesh, and we're going to do it using an import uh, import mesh async. Okay, that's a, the method that we're going to use. But what I want to do is I want to be able to uh, tell the program that what we're what we're doing here should wait until that operation has finished. I want to wait until the mesh has fully loaded into the scene before we continue on. 
And we can do this by telling our entire program here, our create scene function in Babylon, that we want it to be an async function. This is async and await is this awesome pairing that exists in JavaScript that allows you to do some truly amazing and compelling stuff by telling the program to wait until a certain operation has finished. It's really powerful. I strongly encourage you to check it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, let loaded assets equal await and I'm going to say Babylon dot scene loader okay dot import mesh async now the import mesh async was first it takes the first parameter of a name I'm not going to give it one in this case uh, and then it wants the URL to the location of the asset you want to load okay the the parent directory of where it exists uh, if you are um, uh, want, if you've been following along and you want to use your own asset that you've created in Blender, you're certainly welcome to do that. All you need to do is host your asset somewhere and then put in the URL and follow along here. If you'd like to use the one um, that, uh, that I am using, that is easily available to you as well. Uh, I've hosted that actually in the, uh, the Babylon Assets repository. So we can get to that by doing this. HTTPS colon slash slash assets, okay? dot babylon js dot com uh, slash meshes slash morph target demo slash and then it's going to ask us for the the a string of the actual file and extension so I want to type in bars dot glv and then finally we need to pass the scene so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to load this I'll hit play and you'll see it load so I have the bars, awesome, uh, but they're also being passed to a variable called loaded assets. So let's actually go ahead and uh, do something. I am, I'm a huge fan of console log. I'm a very visual person. I like to see uh, the objects as they get passed around from operation to operation in my program. So something like console log for a person like me is super, super handy for me to be able to specifically see, I can type, uh, I specifically see exactly what is happening. So I'm going to hit console log. I'm going to bring up the, um, the console here. It looks like this. I'm using Chrome. Uh, and so I'm going to hit play and oops, let's bring that back up again. There we go. And look, it is uh, saying that there is an object that has been returned and it has an array in it called meshes that has two objects. The first one has a name of root and the second one has a name of bars. So let's go check this out. I know that this object that is returned, this loaded assets has a meshes array in it. Okay. But let's go open the inspector and look at what we're actually seeing here. There's that root and parented underneath it is the bars. Now, every time you export out of Blender and import into um, Babylon, you're going to see that this root node exists, okay, for GLBs, GLTFs. Um, and we don't have to live with that. I like a little bit of a cleaner hierarchy, so you've probably seen this before in some of our demos. It's very, very easy for us to be able to clean that up. And we can do that by saying let bars equal uh, load assets uh, dot meshes. And in our case, the second instance was the one uh, that was the bars. And so then I'm going to say bars dot set parent. And this is a helper method. And if I set it to null, that will mean that the parent essentially is the scene. Now, the reason you want to use this helper method is it will take all of the positional, rotational, and scaling data, and it will basically bake its world information into the mesh itself, um, which is a really, really handy thing that we want to do because we don't want this thing to move around. If the parent had moved around and it had a different location, if you did it a different way, it might not work. That's why I use this helper function. So, uh, and then of course, what I want to do is I want to say load assets and dot meshes and I am going to say I want the first one which is root and I want to dispose of that. Dispose is the fancy Babylon way uh, word for get rid of, get you out of here, we don't want you anymore. So now when I hit play you'll see we open up our inspector and I have this nice awesome clean hierarchy. I've got the bars by itself, I've got my camera, arc rotate camera, and I've got my hemispheric light. Awesome. Okay, but I have an ugly blue background, so let's quickly change that. That's super easy. Right after we have um, uh, created the scene itself, we're going to say scene.clearColor. That's the background color, okay? And we want that to be equal to Babylon.Color3. 
And then we have a helper function that can return black for us. And so now when I hit play, boom, I now have that black background and I can pivot it around. Awesome, okay, we're making good progress. So the last thing that we wanna do for this video is we want to be able to uh, take all of our morph targets, in Blender we call them shape keys, and we wanna have access to them in an array. We wanna build an array of all of our morph targets. If we click on the bars here, you can see that all of our morph targets exist here, right? They're all in here, perfectly ready for us to use, but we want easy access to them later. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna go create a new function, okay? We're gonna say, let get morph targets equal, this is gonna be an await function, uh, excuse me, an async function, and uh, I want to pass in an asset. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to create an array. Okay, so we'll say let bar morph targets uh, equal, and that's going to be an empty array for now. And then I'm going to create a for loop. So a for loop to just go through, we're going to say let i equal to zero. Uh, and I want to say while i is less than the asset that we've passed in dot morph target manager. Now you may see that we don't have IntelliSense here and that's because in this context, because we're using JavaScript, the uh, concept of asset is any kind of an asset, any type of an object uh, can be passed into this. Uh, if we were using TypeScript, we could actually be more declarative in nature and actually say, no, it's a specific type and we'd get IntelliSense. But since we're in JavaScript, it's okay. I know that morph target manager is what we're after. And then we wanna say dot num targets, okay? Uh, dot num targets is uh, basically the number of targets. How many are there? Um, and then what I wanna do is I wanna say I plus plus, okay? Uh, and then for, so we're gonna basically loop through uh, all of the available targets, however many targets there are, and we're gonna add each one to an array that we can then keep and use for later. So what we'll do is we'll say bar morph targets dot push, and we're gonna push in asset dot morph target manager, and then we're gonna say dot get target, and we're gonna pass in I. So we'll go through, we're gonna go through every single morph target, add it to an array, and then we'll have this handy array again. But of course, since we're in a function, we have to return that, right? We have to return bar morph targets. Okay, so right here, after we've disposed of our uh, root that we don't want anymore, let's create a new asset called bar morph targets. And we're gonna say, we want that to be get morph targets, and we're gonna pass in, um, the uh, bars, okay? But we want to wait until that's finished. We actually created this to be an async function, and so now we wanna say, okay, hey, I wanna wait, I don't wanna do anything else until this is actually finished. And then what we can do is we can say console.log, and we can say bar morph targets, hit play, and watch what we have here. I'm actually gonna do that one more time just to clear this up, and we'll hit play. And now we have, there we go, an array of all 64 of our morph targets. And look at that, they're named conveniently if you remember back to our video where we used Blender's Python API to batch rename our shape keys. We now have them named appropriately and we have an array ready to use for our next video. But for this one, we're actually gonna call that good. I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. We're just starting to scratch the surface of getting into to, um, Babylon. Uh, make sure that you save your progress here. You're gonna wanna save our work because we're gonna continue to build upon it in all of our upcoming videos. Thanks again so much for coming along on this journey with me. I really truly hope you've learned something from it. If you haven't already had a chance to do so, please consider subscribing to this channel so that you don't miss any future updates and we'll see you next time.